Welcome to NWA Championship Wrestling 84. I'm Gordon Soley, your host. During the next hour, we've got a lot of action upcoming, but uh, what you saw just then is the beginning of a war that has broken out between uh, uh, Dory Funk Jr. and Dutch Mantell. With me today, of course, Buddy Colt, and a lot of action happening tonight in Key West. That's right, there really is. So for all of you wrestling fans down the Florida Keys, remember, tonight in Key West, there is going to be a Conk State Wrestling Tournament to name a Conk State Wrestling Champion. So also, next week in Sarasota on November 10th, uh, you will be seeing in Robards Arena, Jesse Barr will be going up against superstar Billy Graham, and a former world champion, Bob Backlund, will be going up against Scott McGee. Could be a great night of wrestling competition at Robarts Arena. With me right now is the NWA World Heavyweight Wrestling Champion, Ric Flair. Alongside of him, the Florida Heavyweight Champion, Jesse Barr. You know, I might add, Gordon, it's always a great, great honor for me to walk out here, as I'm sure it's a tremendous honor and a tremendous feeling that these fans have for me through admiration, respect, and let's say the just general knowledge that the National Wrestling Alliance World Heavyweight Champion is the most qualified athlete in the world today to speak on any subject. Today, through association, it gives me a great deal of pleasure to tell everyone right here that Ric Flair has a newfound interest in the state of Florida. Very, very rarely in life that an athlete with the qualifications and the ability that Ric Flair has pass through the great sport of professional wrestling. In Jesse Barr, you're looking at the closest thing to an equal I've ever had in my entire life. The new Florida heavyweight champion, a great amateur wrestler, a great professional wrestler, who a ladies man personified deluxe. And with, with a great deal of pleasure and with a great deal of honor that I stand here with him and tell all the wrestling fans out here, and you listen up real close, when the name Jesse Barr appears on a program, appears on a marquee arena, you take time out of your schedule to make sure you're sitting ringside because you're gonna have an opportunity to see professional wrestling and professional athletics at its best. Jesse, it's an honor that I stand here with you. And all you folks out there, Gear up, because when Jesse Barr and Ric Flair are in town, you know something heavy is going to come down. Tell him, Jess. Oh, yeah. You know, everybody asked me last night about Dory Funk. Well, you know, he's been hanging on my coattail, slowing me down a little bit for the past few weeks. You know, I've been teaching him stuff in the dressing room, giving him, you know, take, teach him a few takedowns and a few qualifications. But I'm tired of having somebody slow me down. Then you tell me he was... Well, I'll tell you what. Dory Funk Jr., a great athlete, a great champion, took you and tried to convince everybody out there that he was teaching you the ropes of wrestling. Jesse Barr has never needed a teacher. He's never needed a coach. God's given ability and the love of the great sport of wrestling has taken him where he is now. Through association, through association, he will run the state of Florida run the wrestling here the way he sees fit. You gear up for it, you get ready for it. Jesse Barr and Ric Flair are like diamonds. Woo! We're forever. You understand that? Thank Dig you, it, sir. get ready for it. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Well, what a turn of events here. Jesse Barr coldly and uh, calculatingly turning aside Dory Funk Jr. Perhaps this will explain something that has occurred recently. Let's go now to a match between Jesse Barr and Scott McGee, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. All right, here you see it, Jesse Barr moving uh, rather effectively at this particular moment against Scott McGee. Scott McGee powers out. Referee, of course, uh, watching Barr. Barr in the uh, red trunks of the blue piping. High knee lift by Barr that uh, puts Scott McGee back to the canvas once again. Barr rolling forward, and once again, Scott McGee powers out before the count. Now, you talk about... Uh, Tremendous athletes you've got it in these two men. Scott McGee, of course, from Scotland. Jesse Barr, who was a slated, uh, the people felt, oh, good move by Barr as he caught him. And now look at here. A full Boston Crab applied by Jesse Barr, but Scott McGee is not conceding. And that's the 
the kind of, of breed of, uh, of proud young lions that we have in professional wrestling today under the sanction of the NWA. And boy, I'll tell you, we talk about great, great athletes. We've got them here. Look at Scott McGee just withstanding tremendous pain and reverses that situation. Uh, almost had Barr into a pinning situation. You see over in the far corner, there was Dory Funk Jr. Uh, you saw him in the uh, far corner of the screen. As these two continue to battle in the ring, there you see Dory Funk Jr. at ringside and very intent. Uh, you can see uh, his, uh, his motions. He's uh, very concerned about the, and now he ties up Scott McGee. Watch Barr, the calculating opportunist that he is, drives that knee into the small of the back. And here it is uh, Dory Funk Jr. Of course, that's an automatic disqualification. And uh, Dory Funk Jr. now putting the cowboy boots to Scott McGee outside the ring. But now watch carefully. Scott McGee goes back into the ring, and the referee is indicating a, a disqualification here, but the battle goes on. No question about this. But now watch. Enter one, Dutch Mantel. And suddenly, I think, and uh, there you see it's Funk again, as clever as he has started. It looked like he was moving away from the picture. Uh, from the, uh, the situation, suddenly charging Dutch Mantell, catching him as Mantell is trying to get back into the ring. Again, Mantell tries to get in, and again, Dory Funk Jr. cut him off the fast. This time, Mantell rolls into the ring. And brother, you talk about somebody who can uh, take it and dish it out as well. It is indeed these two men. We've got a, uh, a barroom brawl going here, and uh, Dutch Mantell ripping and tearing at anything he can get his hands on. And so it is uh, Dory Funk Jr., four and a half years world heavyweight champion finding himself and as he starts to come up again again Mantell trying to get, get that shirt off charged in on top of him and uh, pounding away at the head of one Dory Funk Jr. Mantell obviously uh, by seeing this has a tremendous sense of fair play a great sense of justice and uh, Dory Funk Jr. now a day staggered man full body slam and again Dutch Mantell crashing into the chest of Dory Funk Jr. And Funk trying to get up, and Dutch Mantell uh, ripping and tearing away at him. And uh, Funk, I'm sure, beginning to feel somewhat humiliated here, the referee. But look, now watch Funk, however. Let's not sell this man short. You don't become a world heavyweight champion and keep that title for four and a half years uh, eating milk toast every day. You have to be uh, one heck of a man, and that's exactly what he is. You can see now Funk has been uh, lacerated after those repeated blows to the head by Dutch Mantell, and Mantell right back after him again. And uh, Funk, back to the basic, the double leg dive that takes uh, a barroom brawl or not. And now Funk retaliating in kind against Dutch Mantell. A real pier six are going between these two right now. And uh, now uh, Mr. Funk is about to lose his trousers. That is as Funk beats a, a rather hasty retreat. No, he does not beat a hasty retreat. Watch. As he's coming back into this, catches uh, Dutch Mantell right across that abdominal wall with the edge of that chair. And watch Funk now as he brings that chair up by Mantell, ducks to one side, catches him with a solid right hand. It's Mantell now, fighting fire with fire, and Funk driven back to the canvas once again. And so Dutch Mantell, uh, a veritable uh, firebrand, no question about it. And Mantell has the former world heavyweight champion thrown on the canvas. And... Uh, it is uh, Funk in a lot of trouble here. Mantell leaving the ring area at this time, feeling uh, in his own mind, I guess. And now watch Jesse Barr moves in. Funk collapses. And watch Barr. Watch Barr. You talk about a man who is a total, complete opportunist. There he is. He shakes his head, hands in disgust and leaves the scene. Well, all I can say is that... Uh, Obviously, as I said at the beginning of the program, war has certainly broken out between Dutch Mantell and uh, Dory Funk Jr. And Jesse Barr is as cold and as calculating an athlete as I've ever known. We'll be back in a moment. Stand by Key West because the, all the action happens tonight at the Key West Football Stadium. Kevin Sullivan in the Purple Haze facing 
the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, and superstar Billy Graham. And the first time ever in the history of the great Conk State, there will be a six-man elimination tournament for the Conk State Championship. And it'll be Scotty McGee, Mike Graham, Fiscal Pez Watley, Jesse Barr, Dory Funk Jr., and the Saints competing in that particular event. There will be two other great matches. I want to take a moment now to talk to Mike Graham, Scotty McGee, and Superstar Graham. First of all, Superstar, it's going to be you and Dusty Rhodes against the Hayes and Kevin Sullivan. That's it. That's the first thing, number one on the menu, is Superstar Billy Graham, the American Dream, Purple Hayes, and the Devil himself. You will see the Devil live and in person in Key West. Superstar and American Dream will pull Nelson the Devil again. Mike, you, uh, Scott McGee, and a host of others in that six-man conk tournament. You know, I couldn't be more proud as to be able to say that I was the first man to ever hold that conk state title because I know it means a lot to the people in Key West. I spent a lot of time in the Keys, in Key West diving and fishing. And I'll tell you, Scotty McGee and all the other guys that are in this tournament, Scotty, if it does wind down to me and you, it'd just be the best man win because I know we'll all be out there trying for it. There's the crown that's up for grabs uh, tonight in Key West, Scotty. You know, uh, it's a great honor for me uh, to be in the Conk State Championship. Uh, like Mike said, it might come down to uh, Mike and myself wrestling for that championship. And uh, if, if, that, if a situation like that happens, then a friendship will be out of the winner because the most important thing is winning. And that's what I'm going to be down there for. Thank you so very much. That's tonight in Key West. Great, great action upcoming. And don't forget, next Wednesday night, championship wrestling competitors of Apache Heritage. And uh, I might just say, gentlemen, and Jay, particularly to you, that we of championship wrestling have ourselves a bit of a predicament because uh, recently uh, you were a, 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 a very able substitute, as we're going to find out, uh, in a world championship match. However, we apparently did not make it clear enough to the referee that it was a non-title match because of the substitution. Consequently, the NWA is looking at us and scrutinizing us rather uh, uh, heavily. But, Mark, you must be terribly proud of what Jay was able to accomplish. That's right, Gordon. You know, first of all, I'd like to say it's a great pleasure being here in the Florida area. But, you know, last night was the biggest time and the biggest spectacular thing in my life coming here to Florida and actually seeing my brother beat the world champion Ric Flair for the NWA championship you know like they said it was not the match was not supposed to be it was supposed to be a substitute match therefore the title was not on the line but Jay went in there and beat the man one two three and the people in the Florida area did see this well I'll tell you what Gordon you know like Mark said it's always a pleasure to come here and, and talk to you and the people of uh, championship wrestling but as you know, Florida Championship Wrestling is, uh, like you said, uh, being uh, looked into by the NWA because when I stepped in the ring against the world champion, they, were, they had failed to tell me and to tell the people that it was not a title match because of the substitution. But Gordon, I'm gonna tell you what, just as sure as I'm standing here, Rick Flair, if you can hear me, and the folks that are looking at me right now, I've beaten you before, Flair. You know, I've, I've always uh, been as, wor as a world champion, as a world tag team champion, on, on five different occasions. You know, Flair, I've also wrestled you, along with another partner of yours, and I've beat you right, one, two, three, right in the middle. And I've also proven that I can beat you in single matches, and that's what I'm looking forward to right now, Flair. I don't know what's gonna happen with the NWA and championship wrestling in Florida. But I'm going to guarantee you one thing, Flair, I'll beat you again. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Mark and Jay Youngblood, I might just point out the NWA has ordered us at this time to show you the closing moments of this match between uh, Jay Youngblood and uh, Ric Flair, the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. However, uh, the title was not on the line as it was assumed by Mr. Youngblood and the people who are watching. So let's go to the closing moments of that match. And a good chop into the uh, throat, and now it's Flair with a uh, spinning toe hole, but uh, Youngblood breaks it up. And uh, Flair again ties, ties up that leg, but watch Youngblood utilizing that, and notice the way he chain wrestles into a pinning combination. Flair, the world champion, able to come out of it. And uh, now it is Youngblood exchanging chops with uh, the world champion, Rick Flair. Flair trying to set him, and look at the block by Youngblood. Flair tried to set him for a vertical uh, souffle. Beautifully blocked by Youngblood. Then Youngblood was able to counter that with his own souffle. And so Flair is the one who had the tremendous percussion uh, along those 26 vertebrae in the spinal column. All right, Youngblood 
catches one right in the pit of the stomach as he moves in against Flair. You cannot sell this man, Ric Flair, short. He is doubled up. And look, look at this now. Good block, and then Youngblood reverses once again on Ric Flair. So Youngblood, that adrenaline really flowing now, appears to be very much in command of the situation. Referee Bill Alfonso watching carefully. Youngblood, and that appeared to be the inside of the hand, an open-handed chop, another open-handed chop. Flair in trouble here. And it is Flair up and over on that top rope, almost all the way over. And again, it is uh, Flair catching Youngblood right on the belt line coming in. And Flair coming to his feet somewhat groggy. Moves in on, but uh, as I say, of course, this man is the champion. Good counter again by Youngblood, and Youngblood catches him. Two tomahawk chops into the throat. It's Youngblood, duck under, go behind, away cinch. Flair looking onto those ropes, but Youngblood rips him free and almost scores the pinfall. Excellent counter wrestling on the part of both men. Both men going to the absolute limit in physical endurance and stamina. Now watch Flair. As Youngblood has been uh, dazed and staggered, brought to the canvas. Now Youngblood back on his feet. Flair suddenly uh, in uh, dire jeopardy here as uh, Youngblood catches him on that top rope, hurdles him halfway across the ring. Flair taking a lot of percussion now to the uh, side of the hip and again a chop into the uh, head. And now Youngblood moves into that uh, Apache dance, catches him with another tomahawk chop to the top of the head. It's Flair reeling against those ropes now. Irish whip by Youngblood. Beautiful drop toe hold by Jay Youngblood has the world heavyweight champion back. And now at Indian Deathlock. And look at the bridge back. And uh, you can hear Flair. He is beginning to scream in pain. He is beginning to scream in pain as Youngblood is keeping total pressure on that leg that and on the knee. And the referee, Bill Alfonso, I'll tell you something else about Rick Flair. Uh, he knows what that championship means. He's had the taste of that money. And he is not about to concede, and he makes it to those ring ropes, and that forces the break once again. And that leg has got to be giving him trouble. Youngblood moves in confidently. It is Youngblood now who can, uh, well, smell that sweet scent of victory. And it is uh, Flair again, this time taking a desperate measure, a cheap shot, if you will, against Youngblood. He misses with a chop. It's Youngblood, cross-body block. And a near fall for Jay Youngblood as Flair powers out just before the count. Now, this match is, we're deep, deep into the match, and the time is beginning to take its toll. Look at this. Beautiful move. Once again, almost had him. A chop, and now the exchange chop aside. Headlock coming off the ropes now. And a, from a guillotine to a lateral guillotine, and the champion's shoulders are down. A count of three. A count of three, and so Jay Youngblood did indeed score a victory. Don't you tell these people nothing. You got no right. The NWA's got no right. Not Championship wrestling performance got no right. You don't know how to do this. Yes. You're not supposed to play down on this show. Who are you, Ribbon Stoley? You got money. You want it in my pocket. You know what a lawyer is? You tell BWF, and you, and you smart guy. Nobody plays that tape of me and Youngblood. It's going to cost you a ten of dough, brother. You think you're going to shut out there? Well, uh, we were told by the NWA, in deference to what happened, uh, to play it, and that's what we've done. And we're facing lawsuits. I guess we're facing lawsuits. We'll be back. Uh, Big Bob Owens and uh, the Raider, who I understand is a martial arts expert. So we should have uh, an interesting mixture of uh, matches in this particular situation. Well, there you see Pez Watley with a waist lift takedown on Big Bob Owen. And Bob Owen outweighing Pez Watley by quite a few pounds. And there's just Pez Watley reaching over, making a very fast tag out to his partner, Larry Hamilton, coming in. Tag is made. Steve Brinson charges in. Larry Hamilton with a quick uh, wing over takedown. And Hamilton cinches down on that. Brinson, a big, powerful uh, youngster. 
and is doubly dangerous in the ring. I've had an opportunity to watch him wrestle uh, throughout several sections of the country, and he's uh, a tough individual. But he's got uh, sweet brown sugar to contend with now. Well, this is the first time we've had sweet brown sugar here in Florida for quite some time, and this is a very exciting wrestler to watch. Another fast tag going out. The pass Wally coming back in on that same left arm, just putting that pressure right there. It's about time for Brinson to tag out. He tags into the Red Raider. The Red Raider coming in. Let's see if he can fare any better against Pez Wadley. Pez Wadley with a headlock takedown and just putting that pressure on. Looks like they're trying to make short work of this tag team combination. And in comes Larry Hamilton, another uh, great uh, wrestler who was, uh, went to college here in Tampa, Tampa University. Here he is, a left arm bar. Just has the bar. They stay right on that same hole. The wing over takedown and uh, just putting that pressure on. They're not giving their opponents any chance at all. Steve Brinson moves in now, and it's Larry Hamilton. Swinging around that arm and uh, punishing him. Aha, Brinson finally gets Hamilton back in their own corner. And Big Bob Owens and Brinson both pounding away on Hamilton. He's being held by the Raider. Hamilton's going to have to battle his way out. He caught Brinson and staggered him. Somersault's over, makes the tag with Pistol Pez Watley. Watley pounding away at Steve Brinson. And Brinson in trouble now. Watley closing in on him once again. Irish whip off the ropes. High backdrop by Pistol Pez Watley. Makes the tag with sweet brown sugar. Sugar. Wow! Sugar exploded. With one of those big drop kicks, another one by sweet brown sugar. A third drop kick by sweet brown sugar. And he has decimated this entire team. Three drop kicks in a row. And now sweet brown sugar. That second rope catches Steve Princeton. <laughs> Boy, you talk about a powerful tag team combination. You got it right there. In uh, Pistol Pez Watley, Larry Hamilton. Now the addition of Sweet Brown Sugar. Welcome back, sir. Welcome, people of the state of Florida. It's a pleasure for me to be back. First of all, I want to say you got people walking around here carrying other people's flags. Well, let me tell everybody, I don't know about you, but I'm a apple pie and hot dog man myself. And I'm pretty darn proud to be a U.S. citizen, the greatest country of the world. Tying people up, hanging people, cutting people's hair. That stuff went out a long time ago. This is 1984, knocking 85 in the door. And fans, when I get in this area, full blast, you can bet your sweet bottom dollar, I'm gonna make all these people walk like a black cat do by night. <laughs> right there. Very nice, thank you, gentlemen. We'll be back with more action in just a moment. They found those hopes and aspirations dashed on the rocks when they met the Cuban connection Big Jim Neidhart and Crusher Khrushchev, as evidenced by this film. And Big Jim Neidhart and Crusher Khrushchev and the Fantastic Now beginning to take his measure on this combination. But this combination has been indeed awesome throughout the entire match. And it has been the Fantastic using the great speed, their strength, their skills, and their abilities. But uh, thus far, the Cuban small of the back. It's uh, Crusher Khrushchev bringing him up now. A gut wrench into a backbreaker and watch Snyder come down across him, straight across the throat. And it's the second Fantastic moving in there, giving it everything he's got. But these, uh, this Russian connection or the Cuban connection, just absolutely overpowering. Prodigious strength. They're a powerful combination and have been running roughshod over every single tag team combination that's come along. The Fantastic, of course, coming to Florida with a great look at this. Down across the uh, knee and, of course, they're taking up that, all that pressure in the abdominal wall. These Fantastics came here with a great reputation, but uh, that reputation is surely being marred here tonight uh, by this combination of Prussia Khrushchev and Big Jim Neidhart. Referee Bill Alfonso down, tolling the count. He gets the three count, and this awesome combination continues to roll on like a steamroller. And there you see the Saint moving in, the Cuban connection. Well, speaking of awesome, we're going to take a look at a fellow right now who's indeed awesome. Uh, he helped train the uh, wrestlers for the Olympic uh, meet this year. 
he is a former world champion. I'm referring, of course, to Bob Backlund. Let's take a look at Bob Backlund in action, facing uh, Gary Royal. And uh, Backlund in the orange trunks is an absolute bear about conditioning. He's perhaps one of the most greatly conditioned athletes I've ever known. And Backlund wastes no time. Look at this tremendous lift as he brings this man up above his head and uh, deposits him on the uh, top turnbuckle. Uh, this man, Backlund, is in training constantly. If you could train 24 hours a day, he would be doing it. I say a former world champion, great competitor, NAIA uh, collegiate champion, all-around athlete, has his man trapped, uh, hooks that arm, cross faces at the same time, and this man very quickly, Gary Royal, conceding uh, to uh, Backlund, and it is all over Bob Backlund, the victor. Championship wrestling will be held uh, tonight in Key West at the Key West Football Stadium. A great night of wrestling competition. And this coming Wednesday night, championship wrestling will be held in Miami at Miami Sunset High School. That'll be Miami Sunset High School this coming Wednesday night. The Florida Heavyweight Championship goes on the line. Jesse Barr defending that title against the challenge of superstar Billy Graham. Pistol Pez Watley and Larry Hamilton take on Crusher Khrushchev and Big Jim Neidhart. The U.S. Tag Team Championship on the line. It'll be Dory Funk Jr. against Dutch Mantel. Bob Backlund takes on Kendo Nagasaki. The Purple Haze and Kevin Sullivan wrestle against Jay and Mark Youngblood. The Warrior faces Sweet Brown Sugar. The other Warrior faces The Saint. All of this action is this coming Wednesday night. Mr. Pez Watley is with me. You and Larry Hamilton have quite a chance. Yes, and I'd just like to say we're going to be down there early in Key West. Get down. Yes, sir. We're going to have us a good time. And then we're going to take care of business in Miami. Me and Larry Hamilton, we coming after you, Russian. And you, Big Jim Nightheart. I know you got the same hanging around trying to do some obstructions. But we're going to take care of business down there. And if you think we ain't, come down there because the pistol man is on fire and his guns is ready and loaded. Okay, that's all going to happen Wednesday night in Miami at Sunset High School. Right now, we're going to hear some comments from Dory Funk, Jr., the Cuban Connection, and Jesse Barr. Okay, in Key West, I'm in the Conk State Tournament. So is Jesse Barr. Jesse Barr walked away from the fight. He left me when I was in trouble. And I hope in that tournament in Key West, I face Jesse Barr. Miami Sunset High School, I got somebody else, and I'm awful glad to be in the ring. And that's Dutch Mantel. Now, I've heard it said already that I got whipped for the first time since Jack Briscoe was here. I'll tell you what, Jack Briscoe never whipped me, and Dutch Mantell never whipped me, because I was looking for him, and Dutch Mantell is the one that left the ring. Here's a $500 suit. I'd give a lot of those for one more chance at Dutch Mantell, and I'm going to get him in Miami Sunset High School. And bring your whip, Mantell, because I've got a whip, too, and I can use it. And at Sunset High School in Miami, Van Aven, Los Champions of Russia, contra Larry Hamilton, y Pistol Pez Walti, y tú a ver quién es el número uno. Hey, Crusher, do they allow chumps like Pistol Pez Watley and Larry Hamilton to be walking freely on the streets in Russia? In Russia, they'd be arrested for indecent exposure, and that's how it should be right down there. Superstar Billy Graham, you want what I have. The golden belt of Florida. This means I am the best wrestler in Florida. You've got them big 23, 24-inch arms. But every hour you spent in the, in the weight room working out, I spent in the ring learning how to wrestle. And after Wednesday night, you'll have learned a valuable lesson. Well, there you have it, the comments of Jesse Barr, the Florida heavyweight champion, superstar Billy Graham, who's held the world title in the past, will be facing this man. Good statement. Remind that punk kid, Jesse Barr, Superstar Billy Graham was the former world champion. I also was at one time the Florida State champion of the entire universe. So you don't need to worry about teaching Superstar how to wrestle. I'm going to teach you how to fight, Jesse Barr. I'm going to teach you how to get out of the full Nelson. And there's only one way. And that's by saying, I give up. Fair enough. And Dutch Mantel, the war has started with Dory Funk Jr. No you ain't just a talker, and the war has started. Gordon Solon has started between me and an old friend of mine, Dory Funk Jr. Now, a lot of people said, Dutch Mantel, what do you got against Dory Funk Jr.? Well, he knows what I got against him, and I know what I got against him, and we're the only two that know. And I've come a long way to get you, Funk, and I finally caught up with you, but I'm not satisfied now. 
But I want some more of you, punk, and I'm gonna get some more of you in Miami. And hey, you bring that little dinky whip to the ring and I'll make you eat it, baby. I'll make you back up all the way to the wall and I'll cut you right in two. It'll stop a 1,200-pound bull, punk, and I'll think it'll stop you right dead in your tracks. Thank you, Gordon. Thank you, Dutch Mantel. You'll be seeing him in action uh, this coming Wednesday night in Miami at the Sunset High School Gymnasium. That's the Sunset High School Gymnasium. Match time is 8 p.m. this coming Wednesday night. Don't forget, wrestling tonight in Key West. Mom, you should buy Billy ColecoVision. Huh? Then he could play Thursday time. Besides, he ate his Brussels sprouts. And ColecoVision plays Congo Bongo. And Billy did seem good. This wouldn't have something to do with a free Cabbage Patch Kid. Cabbage Patch? Buy a ColecoVision and a Coleco game cartridge by November 15th. We'll send you a free Cabbage Patch Kid by Christmas. Wow, ColecoVision, way to go, Amy. I did it just for you. When you buy ColecoVision, you make two kids happy. B.J. Thomas is coming to South Florida with the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band and five great acts. Sunday, November 4th, starting at 1 p.m. at C.B. Smith Park in Pembroke Pines. Tickets available at all Bass and select a seat outlets. Proceeds benefit the Adam Walsh Child Resource Center. For information, call 435-2500. Attention, Jefferson Ward customers and everyone who likes to save money. For two days only, Sunday and Monday, you are guaranteed to save at least 10%, and maybe even 20, 30, 40, or 100% on everything you purchase up to $300 during Jefferson Ward's secret discount sale. When you have finished shopping, present your secret discount ad to the cashier, who will rub off the seal, revealing your special discount. If you have not received your ad, pick one up at any Jefferson Ward store. You're guaranteed to save 10% to 100%. Secret discount sale Sunday and Monday. Don't miss it. Jesse Barr, the Florida heavyweight champion, getting set to move out against his opponent, and uh, that's Paul Gomez. Paul is a tall, uh, rangy individual. By the way, Kevin Sullivan and the Purple Haze were uh, scheduled to wrestle here today on uh, championship wrestling, but uh, they have been uh, momentarily barred by the NWA after their unnecessary roughness uh, with Angelo Mosca Jr., so they will not be seen today. Gomez very quickly made it to those ring ropes, and that forced the break, but Barr was very much in control of the situation, buddy. Well, Ooh, Jesse, Fireman's Carey, oh, nice Fireman's Carey takedown. Uh, Jesse Barr is one of those wrestlers that is cold, ruthless, and cunning. Uh, it's been obvious to me lately what, that he will put a knife into the ribs of his friends and turn and twist it anything to further his own wrestling career, uh, and such as people have seen with his, his regards to uh, Jeff Dory Funk who he did have a close alignment with. Now it seems like he has dropped Funk for uh, Ric Flair. Anything to further his own uh, career. Now, oh, here's uh, Paul Gomez, but Jesse Barr coming back with his big hard forearm up against the head, like I said. Jesse Barr, the Florida heavyweight wrestling champion. Cole, look at this big soup play there. And that knocks it all out, Paul Gomez. Jesse Barr, very powerful, very strong, very capable wrestler. Brother, oh. perfectly executed again. Belly to belly, now he's got him up for that uh, shoulder breaker. And uh, hooking that leg away from the ring ropes, so Gomez had no opportunity to try and get to the ring ropes. So using the shoulder breaker, Jesse Barr emerges the victor. Championship wrestling will be held tonight in Key West, Florida, at the Key West High School Stadium, a great night of wrestling competition, including the six-man Conk State Championship. Also, this coming Wednesday night, there you see the title that'll be uh, going to the winner tonight in Key West. This coming Wednesday night, championship wrestling will be held in Miami at Miami Sunset High School. Also, this coming Monday night, championship wrestling in West Palm Beach at the West Palm Beach Auditorium. On uh, Friday night, championship wrestling will be held at the Palm Beach County Fair, and that'll be at the Palm Beach Fairgrounds. And, of course, on the 24th, championship wrestling will be held at the Broward County Fair. We'll tell you more information about that next week. And don't forget, of course, on the 16th, championship wrestling will be coming to Nassau and Nassau Stadium. This coming Wednesday night, it's Miami Sunset High School. Match time is 8 p.m. Jesse Barr defends the Florida title against superstar Billy Graham. Still haven't done it, have you? Oh, I know you've talked about it, thought about it, you've even dreamed about it. Well, you've got one more chance. I do? 
You do, because those great grand opening values are back at Waterbed City. We've opened a new North Miami showroom. But I live in Fort Lauderdale. Well, you can save at all 11 Waterbed City locations. So now, are you gonna do it? Yes! Now, are you glad you did it? I think he's glad he did it. Attention, Jefferson Ward customers and everyone who likes to save money. For two days only, Sunday and Monday, you're guaranteed to save at least 10%, and maybe even 20, 30, 40, or 100% on everything you purchase up to $300 during Jefferson Ward's secret discount sale. When you have finished shopping, present your secret discount ad to the cashier, who will rub off the seal, revealing your special discount. If you have not received your ad, pick one up at any Jefferson Ward store. You're guaranteed to save 10% to 100%. Secret discount sale Sunday and Monday. Don't miss it. We just saw Jesse Barr in action. He'll be defending his Florida title next Saturday night, the 10th, in Sarasota Robarts Arena. Also, uh, Dory Funk Jr. takes on uh, Pistol Pez Watley. The Young Blood Brothers will be going up against the Purple Haze and Kevin Sullivan. I want to take a couple of moments right now to talk to an athlete who's got some remarkable credentials. I'm referring, of course, to uh, Jim Neidhart. Uh, went, of course, to college in uh, UCLA. Mr. Neidhart, uh, you were an all-around athlete all of your life in high school and in college as well. Uh, you were, uh, at age 18, rated as the finest shot putter the in the world. Number one shot putter in the world at 18 years old. Yeah, all right, you uh, also, of course, uh, competed against the USSR both in 1973 and 1975. Uh, you went on, of course, to play professional football with the Dallas Cowboys yes. and on to the Oakland Raiders. So yes. you have... Uh, the uh, Oakland Raiders, the winningest football team of all time. Well, there's certainly no question about that. In fact, matters, we have some pictures that I think might be of interest right now. Uh, there, of course, uh, in your football uh, heyday when you were... Uh, uh, certainly collegiate, uh, collegiately and professionally, uh, just an outstanding, uh, very aggressive competitor. Uh, it was in 1973 that you made your first trip to Russia, was it not? Yes, I represented the United States track and field team. We went over to Odessa, Russia. We beat the Russians. These are the Polacks right here. These are very fine gentlemen here. Uh, these, uh, we went one, two, and we beat them here also. They, they have a lot of, um, a lot of insight, a lot of, uh, technology, which the United States athletes have, uh, haven't got a chance of getting, uh, because the AAU and the United States system over here suppresses the U.S. athletes so much. All right, now here is another picture. This is, uh, once again in Russia, and this was in 1975, is that Yes, this is when I had, uh, beat the Russians. I had over there in 75, re represent the U.S., uh, which the, the AAU has never really helped me at all. They have, they have suppressed me. They've kept me back. The Russian system, they feed their athletes. They take care of them. They subsidize them. They make sure that they're going to be the best. And let me tell you something. If the Russian athletes... This is me right here with my good friend, uh, Comrade Zuroff, over here on the left. Uh, I got some very valuable information from him. Well, now, it, on the shot put, which enabled me to become uh, one of the best uh, senior throwers in the United States, pre-Montreal in 76. Well, now, I, I, it, apparently, it was during these visits to Russia, then, that you began to uh, uh, develop quite, a, quite an affinity, apparently, for, uh, for the Russian athletes. Well, uh, the Russian system, they know how to treat an athlete. They take care of him. They subsidize him. They teach him the right methods in sports medicine, something which you cannot get in the United States through the AAU. The United States has done nothing for their athletes over here. And listen, uh, whether you like it or not, in 1984, in the Olympic Games over in Los Angeles, if the Soviet Union was over there, in, in, in Los Angeles, there would be a big, there would be a big disappointment, and a lot of disappointed U.S. athletes. I don't like your attitude, my dog. You've got a bad attitude. You want to live in this country, but you want to hang out with that Russian, and you want to be a communist. Why don't you go over there and be one? Let me tell you something, Dutch Mantel. You got kind of a big mouth, don't you, chump? Yeah, I got a big mouth.
something, Gordon. Let me get back here, baby. I don't mean to interrupt your show. I don't mean to come in here. But you know a guy that'll come over here and run his mouth, he's got a big mouth. And he'll talk about this country. And he wants to milk it, honey. But he'll talk about it that way. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. I come to Florida for a reason. But that reason does not include listening to some loud mouth, communist loving jerk over here run his mouth about this country because when he's talking about this country, I figure he's talking right to me. Let me tell you where I'm coming from, Gordon. Several years ago, the United States they had a conflict in Southeast Asia, South Vietnam. And when I was drafted in the United States Army, I knew that's where I was going. And for 11 months and 27 days, I fought and I cried for my life because I laid in the jungles of Vietnam with the 25th Infantry Division fighting for this country. And I saw many a boy, many American boy drop dead. That never came back. And they were my friends. 52,000 American lives lost. And I thank God that I'm able to come back and breathe God's green air and walk this earth. But when a guy like this comes over and runs his mouth, baby, he's talking right to me. And Nightheart, you tell that Russian and you tell that Cuban connection that I'm not afraid of you, brother, because I left fear a long time ago in the jungles of South Vietnam where I fought for my life. And they couldn't kill me there, and they can't hurt me here. So, boys, I'll be ready the next time around. Thank you, Gordon. I don't want to inter interrupt your show, but I had something to say. Somebody need to shut that jerk up. All I can say is that I'm damn proud of Dutch Mantell. We'll be back. and Jay Youngblood getting set to move out against Ken Timms and uh, Randy Barber. One fall television time remaining. This should be quite a match indeed. The Youngblood's an exceptionally uh, popular tag team combination. That's Mark Youngblood. Full arm dragon twist by Timms and a reversal by Youngblood. Youngblood now the arm of Ken Timms. We well, you know, Gordon, this team of Mark and Jay Youngblood, they're a very exciting team. They have wrestled extensively throughout the United States and throughout the world, and uh, they are always a pleasure to watch. Uh, a lot of chain reaction there, a lot of chain wrestling. See, Ken Timms is dropping down. Oh, it looks like uh, Mark Youngblood was ready for them, ready for anything that happened. Coming over the side headlock, going over, making the tag out to his partner, Jay Blood, Youngblood. So, uh, like you saw earlier, had just had that pinfall on World Heavyweight Champion Ric Flair as quite an accomplishment. Going right back to that side headlock, side headlock takedown. You see he's got his full body weight on the upper chest of the Hollywood Blonde there. Just hanging on to that side headlock, putting that pressure on. This here is not a submission hole, but it can sure tear your head off. It can uh, really wear you down. Well, Ken Tams was able to reverse that control the side headlock on his own. Tams back from behind, and uh, that didn't work well for him at all. Ken Tams finding the going rather rough against Jay and Mark Youngblood. These uh, two are of Apache heritage, and... Uh, they are uh, making their presence felt here today on MWA Championship Wrestling 84. The tag is made. Randy Barber moves in. All you saw there, Jay Youngblood think very quickly uh, moved out of the way. Randy Barber just hurting himself. He come down and missed that big flying elbow. These Youngblood brothers are very exciting to watch. A lot of charisma. You tell they're a favorite of the wrestling fans. Ken Tim trying to sneak in, the referee catching him, warning him to go back out. Another fast tag made to his partner. Barber taking some punishment, and so is Ken Tim. As uh, Mark Youngblood moves back into the ring. Youngblood now. Bottom wrist lock on uh, Randy Barber, and so Barber's got uh, a lot of problems here. 
moving that into a uh, hammerlock as well. Referee Bill Alfonso continually moving around, checking, wants to see if Barbara wants to concede. Tim's. And so Tim's missed an opportunity to tag. Comes charging into the ring. The referee's sending him back. Meanwhile, the Youngbloods have tagged up. We can tell that the Young Blood Brothers here are a precision tag team. You are know, very easy to tell that they work and train out a lot and train together a lot, constantly together, always making a lot of tags, always getting that fresh man in there. Just hanging on that arm. Looks like Ken Thames there made a mistake. He was trying to reach over, and the uh, Mark Young Blood there was shaking the ropes, causing Ken Thames to fall inside. Referee putting him back out of the ring. Quickly dispatching him again up against those turnbuckles now. And it is uh, Youngblood ducking away as Barber caught that turnbuckle head on. Another fast tag, always getting that fresh man in. Following up with the same hole, putting that pressure on that same arm, wearing it down. Very smart thinking on the part of the tag team here. A special uh, hi and a good will to my good friend Kit Beecher, and it is uh, Youngblood now keeping Barber tied up, and he is so close and yet so far could not make the tag as Ken Timms had extended an arm out there to hopefully tag up. Well, you see Randy Barber there kind of begging for mercy, wanting the ease up. Barber, well, he's pulling him back over in his corner. This is where the tables could turn against the young blood. Ken Timms there holding on to him, taking that tag. Tim's is a very durable competitor and a very dangerous competitor. And Youngblood just found that out as he took a boot right under the rib cage. And Tim's right after him again. Tim's uncorks a hard right hand. He's got Mark Youngblood staggered. Youngblood fires back, however. And now Ken Tim's is on the receiving end. Chain reaction wrestling here. Big high vertical suit play, and down goes Ken Thames. That takes a lot out of you. He's in a lot of trouble, though. He's able to force uh, Young Blood back over in his corner. The referee there trying to break it, trying to restore a little order here. Double teaming on Young Blood, and that may have served them well here. Barber with a lateral press, but Young Blood powers out before the count. <laughs> Well, this here is the first time during the match that the uh, Young Blood team has been in trouble. Young Blood is going to have to get to his corner, tag his partner, get that fresh man in. But of course, Randy Barber is going to try and make sure that he doesn't get out. He's choking him over that top rope. He had his throat down on that rope, just putting the pressure down. Well, of course, competition uh, here is so keen that on any given time or any given night, anybody can be defeated. There's no question in my mind about that. And uh, the Youngbloods now uh, beginning to dominate the situation once again. Uh, drop kick by uh, Mark Youngblood. Barber powers out before the count. Another chop, and it is uh, Youngblood. Pitching Barber, the tag is made. Ken Timms moves in. Ken Timms charges and he charged. High backdrop, Tim's coming to his feet, caught with a chop to the back of the head. Another one to the back of the head. Tim's in trouble here. Off the ropes, chop into the chest, the tag is made. Jay Youngblood moves in, Mark Youngblood. An Indian whip off the ropes, and it is Jay Youngblood. Now the patchy dance, a chop right squarely in the middle of the head. Brings him up once again. Full body slam. Tag is made. Mark Youngblood over that top rope. And as Randy Barber tried to uh, cut him off at the pass, it was uh, Jay Youngblood handling that situation. And so the Youngbloods score an impressive win here on NWA Championship Wrestling 84. That's just about all the time we have. May I just say this in regards to uh, Dutch Mantell. And he apologized to me uh, for his comments and for what he's uh, for breaking into that conversation with Jim I. Neidhart. 
Uh, Dutch, as far as I'm concerned, my friend, you need not apologize. Uh, you certainly had a perfect right to express your opinion as an American, and I can't find fault with it, buddy. Well, I agree with Dutch Mantel completely. If you don't like this country, Jim Nightheart, pack up your bags and go to Russia, Cuba, or anywhere you like. That's all the time we do have for this week. We hope that you'll join us next week at the same time. On behalf of uh, Buddy Cook, this would be Gordon Soley saying so long from the United States.